Haverhill in the 1600s was a small, remote frontier village on the boundary of the English settlement, and as such, saw frequent warfare between the Native Americans and the European settlers. Hannah Emerson Dustin, born here in 1657, had grown up with the struggle of living on the edge of the hostile wilderness. At the time of the attacks, Hannah's family was prospering. Her husband Thomas was a former constable and in March 1697 was in the process of building one of several garrison houses intended to protect Haverhill's villagers. The Abenakis, aware of the garrison construction, knew their window of opportunity was short. March 15, 1697, they struck. That day became known as the Raid on Haverhill where 27 colonists were killed and 13 taken captive, including Hannah, Mary Neff, and the infant Martha. The Dustins and their nine children were living around this spot by the present-day Haverhill High School. It was early morning, and Thomas Dustin was out working the fields when he saw the Indians approaching. He quickly gathered his older children and ran for the Marsh Garrison, one mile away. The recuperating Hannah, her nurse Mrs. Neff, and the baby were in the house. Swiftly, the Abenakis approached, wrestling them from the home and marching all of the captives north. Within hours, baby Martha had been taken from her nurse and bashed against a tree to silence her crying. The captives continued their journey, marching 12 to 14 miles a day until they reached a resting point, an island at the junction of the Merrimack and Contoocook Rivers in present-day Concord, New Hampshire. According to legend, in the early morning hours of March 30th, 1697, Hannah, Mary Neff, and Samuel Leonardson took the initiative and made their daring escape. The three were being guarded by a family of 12 sleeping Abenakis that night. Within minutes, 10 of them lay dead, with only one squaw and a young boy being spared. Hannah, Mary, and Samuel hastily retreated from the island, but returned to collect the 10 scalps wrapped in a cloth from Hannah's loom. They traveled swiftly and carefully back down the river, watchful at all times, as being recaptured would mean certain death. Traveling by night, they stopped at the home of John Lovewell in Nashua, before finally landing at Bradley Brook in West Haverhill. After her return to Haverhill, Hannah's extraordinary tale brought her renown across the Puritan colonies. She traveled to Boston with her scalps and received a bounty of 25 pounds. While in Boston, Hannah told her story to author Cotton Mather, who published the first written account of it. The story was told and retold over the ensuing centuries, but with changing social and ethical mores, it came to be viewed in a different light. Hannah's heroic status has been questioned by many, who find it offensive, if not heinous, that she is celebrated for scalping ten Abenakis, seven of them children. Whether you see her as a heroine or villainess, the debate only reinforces her status as one of New England's most famous colonial women. Stay safe, stay warm, stay free.